I have a question that I'd like you to think a bit about. What did Jesus look like? Now, people have thought about that question for a long time. The Bible says little or nothing about the appearance of Jesus during his earthly ministry. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 2 is one of the few passages that makes any reference to how the Messiah would look. Isaiah 53 2 says, He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now, this passage from Isaiah doesn't really tell us much. First of all, it's written in what we might call the prophetic, poetic style. So, while it describes a real person, that is the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and it describes some of the real events of his life, it does describe them with some poetry. Yet, these words from Isaiah tell us that there was nothing remarkable in the physical appearance of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, spoken of in that passage. Jesus didn't attract people because of his form or because of his comeliness. That's an old word for an attractive appearance. And when it says, there is no beauty that we should desire him, that means that Jesus attracted people because of who he was, not really by how he looked. We can suppose that Jesus looked like a normal, healthy man of his place in his time. Yet, in some sense, we think we know what Jesus looked like. So much so that sometimes we'll look at a uh, man that has a certain kind of hair and beard and facial appearance, and we'll even say, hey, he looks like Jesus. Now, I think it's interesting that one of the earliest depictions of Jesus found painted on a wall in a catacomb pictures him as the good shepherd without any beard or long hair. Though, we must say, this was probably more of an effort of the artist to say Jesus was and is the good shepherd, more than it was the artist trying to say, I think this is what Jesus looked like. Now, there's other paintings from the catacombs that seem to show Jesus in a more traditional appearance. But there are some also relatively early depictions of Jesus that show him in a more traditional way, you know, bearded and with long hair and all. One of my favorites is the famous Christus Pantocrator of the magnificent Hagia Sophia of Constantinople, uh, that is modern day Istanbul, of course. I have to say also that I like the way that the Dutch painter Rembrandt painted Jesus. There was some true artistic genius there, at least in my opinion. Now, in the modern world, Jesus has been presented in all kinds of ways, including what some people call the white Jesus. Maybe you've seen some of these pictures that portray Jesus as a person with relatively white or pale skin, and sometimes even with blue eyes. These pictures of Jesus are often mocked. Uh, they're presented in a way that say, oh, how foolish people are for thinking that Jesus looked like that or that he could have been like that. And I understand the mockery. Some of those pictures are kind of just culturally strange. Nevertheless, I received something that made me think about this all over again. A few weeks ago, or months ago, I should say, uh, my daughter gave me a book that she found in a charity shop in England. The book was titled Son of Man, and uh, being a wonderful daughter, she knew that her dad would be interested in it. And I was interested. This book was published by the British Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in 1939. And there's no author listed for the book, uh, but there was an introduction by Bishop Walter Carey, if I'm making out his name okay. The book is subtitled Pictures and Carvings by Indian, African, and Chinese Artists. And I want to share with you some of the images from that book. Uh, first of all, from the Africa section, here are some images. Uh, number one, a carving of Mary in the infant Jesus. Secondly, a carving of Judas betraying Jesus with a kiss. 
and thirdly, a carving of Jesus on the cross. Now, you'll notice in these that the Bible characters, Mary, Judas, Jesus, and those at the cross, they all had a distinctive African appearance. Of course, Africa is a huge continent. So we say that the characters look something like the peoples of sub-Saharan Africa, at least in some regard. Then we had the India section of this book, uh, Son of Man. In, in that section, we see a painting of Mary and the infant Jesus. And then we also see a painting of the woman who anointed with oil the feet of Jesus. Then there was also a painting of Jesus with the woman at the well. And again, we see in each of these Bible characters, they're portrayed as if they came from some part of India. And of course, this was also true of their depictions of Jesus. Then there's the China section of the book. And in that section, we see a painting of the story that Jesus told about the rich man and the poor man who was named Lazarus. And then next to that, I have for you a painting of Jesus washing Peter's feet at the Last Supper. We also have there a painting of Jesus and his disciples at the Last Supper. Now, again, once more, in each of these Bible characters, including Jesus, or maybe we should say especially Jesus, they're shown as if they are or were, I should say, Chinese. Now, when I read this wonderful book, Son of Man, what was my reaction to all these pictures and carvings depicting Jesus and Bible characters in an African or Indian or Chinese context? Well, like many of you, I thought they were beautiful. They didn't offend me or stumble me in the slightest. In fact, I think that the point of this little book was and is amazing. That Jesus Christ can and should be received and understood in each culture all across the globe. After all, Jesus is, as John chapter 4 verse 42 says, Jesus is the Messiah the Savior of the world. He's the Savior of Africa, he's the Savior of India, and he's the Savior of China. And even if many people in those places don't understand or receive that truth yet, and of course, Jesus Christ is the Savior of Europe and North America, even if many people in those places don't understand or receive it yet. The point is this, there is no other Savior for the world. I think it's well said in this book, in the introduction. Let me read to you a couple short paragraphs from this little booklet, Son of Man. Uh, again, Bishop Walter Carey, if I'm making the name out correctly, says this. Just as the beauty of the eternal God is ever expressing itself in sea and sky and woods and in human faces, and all media of beauty, so the incarnate Christ is ever expressing himself in beauty, truth, goodness, and love, in human apprehensions and hearts. He is expressing himself from within, and his light shines through Marys and Magi and crosses and self-sacrifices and all loving activities. Artists pierce through incidents and trappings to the soul underneath. That soul is Christ, the soul of humanity. In portraying incidents, they catch a glimpse of him who underlies all. In this book, they reveal him, and we understand and adore. Again, I like those pictures from the introduction of this book. So, in light of all that, what are we to make of white Jesus? You know, of, of uh, these kind of pictures. What should we make of them? Well, let me just say, if you really think that Jesus looked like modern European or uh, North American people, please understand that he looked like an average man of his place and time a Jewish man of the Near East about 2,000 years ago. His skin was probably something of an olive complexion, 
and he was probably of normal size and appearance. How Jesus looked was not what set him apart, and he certainly didn't have a halo behind his head. Yet again, when we think of these images of white Jesus, I'm suggesting to you that we don't be completely down on these images in the same way that you should not be completely down on the images of Africa Jesus or India Jesus or China Jesus. We take these depictions of Bible characters in these different cultures as a way of saying the Bible speaks to us in our culture. It isn't just a book of one time and place. The Bible speaks universally. And When it comes to the depictions of Jesus, it's a way of saying Jesus is our Savior. He's our Savior also. We belong to him, and in some sense, he belongs to us. You know, he is the Son of Man. He is the Savior of the world. And I just want to suggest this to you, that understood in the right way, These ethnic depictions of Jesus, African Jesus, Indian Jesus, Chinese Jesus, white Jesus, understood in the right way, they're powerful and beautiful, including any kind of ethnic depiction of Jesus. Now, one last thing. The most detailed depiction of Jesus in the Bible is found for us in the book of Revelation. Let me show you Revelation chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. In the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were like wool, white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Now, obviously, that depiction of Jesus uses a lot of powerful, poetic, symbolic imagery, but it reminds us that maybe instead of focusing so much on how Jesus looked at his first coming, maybe we should think more about how he looks now, gloriously enthroned in heaven, and how he will look at his second coming. Dear friend, you can be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ by receiving him as he came at his first appearing, as the Son of Man, as the Savior of the world, who lived and died and rose again to win rescue for his people. Trust in who that Jesus is and what he did to rescue you. And you can put your trust in him today.